Your body's not at ease, so you're gonna call dis ease in the body. So just know, just keeping everything balanced. You don't want it too high. You don't want it too low. You want it balanced. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Okay. So I was doing this exercise with my mom. Thinking about for people who would like to start eating like this, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes finances is an issue for like there's this myth that eating healthy is super expensive, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And I want us to do a quick just exercise. Let's say I'm a college student, right? I'll give you two scenarios. The mm -hmm. first one, I'm a college student. Mm -hmm. I want to eat healthy. I don't want to put my body at dis-ease. Mm -hmm. Give me a list of seven things I need to have in my grocery cart. Seven things. Where you at in college? What college? What college you at? <laughs> That's going to play a big part. How come? Because certain places don't have certain things, certain food. Okay. They don't have, like, you might not have a whole foods in middle of Georgia or the middle of Alabama. Mm -hmm. So you don't, you might not, your grocery list might be kind of different. But you got to know what stores to go to. So let's just, go, go ahead. let's just say like you do have access to, mm -hmm. to that, right? But I can tell you where to go if you don't have access. Okay, go ahead. tell us both. Tell us what we should do, where we should go, and then what we should add to that list if we do or do not have access. If you don't have access, I'm going to tell you this. Where a foreigner shop usually has fresh fruit. Where Hispanic people shop usually has fresh fruit, fresh vegetables. Mm -hmm. So the food depots, the smaller stores, when you they they okay, their meat section might be bad, mm -hmm. but usually their fruit, their produce section is good. Mm -hmm. So you want to go there. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go to the whatever. The bigger store. needs, because no. the bigger it gets, you think the bigger it gets, the you more. Get more. Because if you're looking like the food depots and the, and the food lines and stuff like that, a lot of the fruits are coming from the tropical places. It's, it's saying it's coming from Mexico, it's coming from Guatemala, and they shop there. They got the cactus, they got the aloe fruit, they got the watermelons, they got the this, the that. So where foreigners shop, I'll say foreigners from the tropical places, wherever they shop, you want to go there. But that's where the first food is. Okay, if you want a bigger city, then you, the ball is in your court. You have a lot of places to go. But what you want to have in your, your, your cart? Seven things. Seven things, and then you're talking about numbers, right? Mm -hmm. What's seven? I'll quiz you. What, what number seven means? The seven things that God created the earth. Seven is the number of completion. The number of completion. And that just means. And seven is what else, too? What is seven? Balance. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, PH, you balanced at seven. Oh, yes, because it's neutral, right? You got 1 to 14. Okay. And 7 is balanced, it's right in the middle. And then 1 would be alkaline. Acidic. 1 would be acidic. 14 would be highly alkaline. alkaline. That's 2 alkaline. That's, That's like ammonia. Okay. You can go to mm -hmm. alkaline okay. in a place called uh, alkalosis. Mm -hmm. and you can go to a city called acidosis. Mm -hmm. So you got to be right in the middle at 7. Mm -hmm. So the okay. 7 thing is. Um, Number 1. Watermelons. If there's ripe cedar watermelon, put that in the buggy. Okay. There's coconuts, put that in the buggy. If you got grapes, if they're not seeded, it's okay. It's okay. I'd rather you eat an unseeded grape than eat McDonald's. All right? Mm -hmm. Put you some grapes in there. Um, if they have some kind of green leafy vegetable, put that in there. That's not kale? Or you can eat the kale. I really, it's my thing. I really eat kale and eat McDonald's. I really you eat kale and eat Chick Fil A, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, the, the the cleaner we get with our diet, we can clean it up a whole lot. Mm -hmm. But I rather you clean it up gradually than just go keep eating crap. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling you, yeah, you put the kale in there. You can cook the kale. You can cook the kale the same way you cook green, mm -hmm. or you can eat it raw. Mm -hmm. um, just start from somewhere. Mm -hmm. If you like if you like mushrooms, you can use mushroom. Mushroom is a meat substitute. Mm -hmm. um, what type of your mushrooms? Lion's mane, your, your oyster mushrooms, your king oyster mushrooms, your uh your uh but those are the those are the main ones, your 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 uh bella, baby bella mushrooms, your uh, that's a lot of them, blank. It's a lot of different mushrooms. You can use that as a meat. Your avocado, that's good healthy fat. Avocado. That's good fiber. Mm -hmm. Um your tomato, your onion, you Guac, camote, is very healthy. 
You got onions, you got peppers, you got avocado. That's good. Mm -hmm. So you can make your own mm -hmm. at home and put your cilantro in it. Mm -hmm. Cilantro is very healthy. Mm -hmm. That's an herb. It's an herb. But um, your guac, your fruit, I mean, your, uh, let's see, the first thing, so we would say watermelon if that's there. If that's not there, you can go coconut or you can go uh, coconut water. Um, now, what type of coconut water? Because I see a bunch of bottles of coconut water. I always do water. Harmless Harvest. Harmless Harvest. The what pink that coconut water. That's the name of the brand. Harmless Harvest. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's pink. Um, if they don't have that, then you can go with the other brands. It's not the best, but it's better than drinking coke. Okay. All right. That's what I always try to get people to see. You're not going to be totally at the tippy top of everything the first time. Gradually move up. If you don't have this, then put this. If I got this, I'm going to use this. Right? So, seven things. Your watermelon or coconut. Um, grape seeded or unseeded. Right. Usually grapes is always in every store. Mm -hmm. your, uh, your oranges. Your apples. Um, bananas are okay. Mm -hmm. They're kind of starchy. Um, this is the fruit. Um, bananas. Um, grapefruit. Some people debate whether grapefruit is okay. Um, but there's so many different types of apples and oranges. Your mango, you got mango in there. Uh, papaya. Papayas are good. Mm -hmm. Pomegranate, kind of cantaloupe. Kind of kind of kind of okay. Usually the basic stuff that you got around you is good. Mm -hmm. Just we just don't we just oh we just don't think about it. Um, so those are for the fruits, right? That's for the fruit. For the vegetables, I would say. If you like mushrooms, lion's mane mushrooms, you, if you can find it. You can't find that. Usually in your regular grocery store, it's going to be like shiitake. You don't want that. You can eat that, but that you get bella. You can get lion's, uh, lion's mane, your, your king oyster mushrooms, and your trumpet mushrooms. Um, I like sweet vidalia onions. I eat onions by themselves. Some people say, you ain't supposed to eat that. If you ain't eat me, I eat onions. <laughs> Uh, I heard onions are actually super healthy for you. I feel like they are for me. They work for me. Um, Which types? White or? I do sweet Vidalia onions from Vidalia, Georgia. Mm -hmm. I'm from Georgia, so that's the onion I eat. But uh, I like sweet onions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, vegetables. You can go kale. You can go spinach. It's not the best. The best would be watercress. That's actually what we use to make jamon jamon. It's a watercress, mm -hmm. and then um, we add spinach, mm -hmm. chop up tomatoes, chop up um, onions, mm -hmm. add palm oil, or we use like olive oil, mm -hmm. add our, our seasoning, and then that's it. Yeah, that's how I have mine. Yeah. yeah. So watercress, you can use romaine. Romaine kind of, we're not growing good right now. Uh, but vegetables. What about like, starches? Starches? Yeah, like potatoes, sweet potatoes. Bananas are starchy. Yucca. Yeah, you got all your, your roots and your potatoes. And you got to know which ones to pick. You got your purple potatoes. Okay, those are good. Yeah, those are alkaline. You, you, go ahead. Raw or cooked? They're kind of hard to eat raw. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, but um, your uh, plantains, plantains, yeah, um, it's a lot of stuff. It's so much. It's so much stuff that just we got thinking of. But it's raw, though. That's the crazy thing. It's There's raw. so many options that we There's have so from fruits options. to vegetables to starches to greens. Just so many things that we can mix and match, and we're not eating buffet style every day. So we have mm -hmm. such abundance in fruits for us to consume that will still give us fruits, vegetables, starches, whatever it is, mm -hmm. that we don't have to necessarily always turn to fast food. Mm -hmm. They put the fast food there because that's going to help them with their agenda. Mm -hmm. The agenda of keeping you in a certain category, the agenda of keeping you sick. Most of America is sick, either one way or the other, either mental or physical. You might not be nothing going on with you physically, but your mental is and this is gone. <laughs> uh, 
but that's another mental health. This is a part of your mental. This helps your mental health. This helps depression. Watermelon helps depression. You got headaches. Watermelon it helps your depression. It helps your anxiety. Make your anxiety go down. Right. So that's what. The, when you go, if you ever been somewhere with a whole lot of fruit around, when you walk in there, you calm down. The color green has a calm down. Uh, different colors will calm you down. Do you think there's a correlation with between? crime and communities that are heavily on a fast food diet or communities that don't eat as healthy or may not invest in as much healthy food. Do you think there's a correlation between crime and nutrition? There's definitely a correlation between the crime rate and nutrition. Mm -hmm. You don't see murders outside of Whole Foods. You don't see murders outside of Scraps. Mm -hmm. You see murders outside of Chicken Spot outside the barbecue place, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's definitely a correlation between crime and, and, and the, the food that's in the store. You see murders outside the convenience stores full of hot Cheetos. And the community that those yeah. things are concentrated in. Yeah, okay. you don't see that in other communities. You don't see that there because those foods are highly acidic. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna put you in an animal state and it's gonna have you in a high paranoia. And your anxiety is going to be up here. And then you're going to run into somebody else whose anxiety is up here. And he got a gun and you got a gun. So y'all have anxiety. You think he's going to do something to you. And you shoot him and he shoots you. And both of y'all dead. Because y'all anxiety is so high for all the stuff y'all put in y'all body. You eating hot Cheetos all day. You eating ramen noodles all day. You drinking Arizona's all day. You eating Skittles, Starburst, chips all day. Fried, Fried chips. All black people have the highest... We eat the most chips in the, in the country because they're salty and crunchy. So salty and crunchy helps your anger because black people be angry in the hood, so they need something to crunch on. So yeah, and then the oils in there is going to go to your brain. It's going to cause dysfunction. And yeah, you're going to have crime. You don't look at your brother as your brother no more. You look at him as an enemy. So yeah, you're going to have, definitely have a correlation between crime and diet mm -hmm. in the community because people that don't want that in the like where we at, we we gonna say where we at, but where we at, we ain't gonna see no churches chicken up here for real. We don't see no JJs up here. None of that. We ain't Everything see no Harold's like chicken. Super up here. Like Cause they not going to allow that in their community, so it keeps the community calm. Mm -hmm. But when you go further south from where we are, yeah, you're gonna see all that. You're gonna see the crime rate go up. Because what's around the consumer. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a correlation between that and food. Most of the time, he done woke up and ate uh, four pieces of bacon and, and, and sausage and this and that all on his plate, and then he go outside angry, mad, mad at work. And you're heavy because you're those heavy. foods are heavy. They fill up your intestines. And, and whatever was going on with that animal while when it was being killed, whatever went, the traumas that animal went through, you now just took it on. You don't know what was going on with that animal mm -hmm. or how many animals you just ate. Because just because you eat this and that, that might be four or five different animals in one patty. It might be four or five different cows in one thing. So you don't, you don't know what you're eating. Mm -hmm. You know, so definitely a correlation. So I have a question mm -hmm. that I, I got an answer. Asked earlier. You do have answers for me. Yeah. So um, I know you and I were talking. We talk. Mm -hmm. um, and you were talking about the importance for men to, like, when it comes to, like, sperm and, like, over-ejaculating and over, you know, masturbating or just mm -hmm. being over, like, just constantly shooting. Mm -hmm. Why is that important for men to take those breaks when it comes to that sexual indulgence? Our semen, men, that's our life force. Our sperm is our strength. Our sperm... Is our everything. That's why we all have y'all have ovaries and we have testicles. Essentially, it's the same thing, but y'all's being it out without. Mm -hmm. So that's where we hold our energy. That's our energy source. That's our life force. So when you letting that go all the time, you never gonna be the man that you really are. You're gonna be a shell of yourself. Your skin is not gonna be clear. Your your your, your I call it your Wi-Fi signal. Your Wi-Fi signal, 
Like your 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 your, your sixth sense ain't gonna be there. Mm-hmm. When I picked up on you being eating fruit, my sixth sense there. Cause I ain't been ejaculating, I ain't been releasing. Mm-hmm. So I pick up on everything in the room mm-hmm. like a like a detective. So when you not on that level of electricity and high and, and a high level like that, you can't pick up on nothing. And other people don't pick like when I'm like when I come in the room, you're gonna feel my energy when I come in the room and you're gonna feel it when it leaves. When I leave, it's gone. But when I come in, you're gonna feel it. It attract people to you. It make people wanna stand by you. Like wherever I go, people be like this. They be trying to like, you I'll be like, why y'all so close to me? I'm like, why y'all standing so close? People feel your energy. They attract you to your energy. So it's gonna attract people to you. You gonna have a like, you can have a lot of confidence, um, that anxiety and depression and all that stuff. Like, I'm going through shit now, but that shit don't it don't bother me. So what? Keep moving, keep pushing, keep fighting, keep pumping, keep punching. So that's really, you have to keep your, that's your strength, as I keep saying. Fighters do not have sex. They do not ejaculate. You, you can't fight on, on, on an empty sack. That, that, that's, that's how, that's, it's consciousness in sperm. Right? That's, the, that's what makes a whole human. Sperm and egg makes a whole human. So that's a lot of life force. That's brain matter. That's that's your nervous system, that's your your blood, your hair, your skin, your nails. All that is going into that sperm and you release it. So you have to keep it in. Because a lot of people that's not like, they're called, they call them succubus. 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 Mm-hmm. They're going to suck your energy. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. They will take your energy away from you and use it. So, yeah, you have to, you have to keep that with you. That's your weapon. For both men and women too. Women are more, women are receivers, but y'all, a lot of girls, a lot of women, you hear say, I'm, I'm celibate, I'm celibate, I'm celibate, but the whole time they, they going through turmoil because they thinking about sex the whole time. True. Yeah, you celibate, but you watch porn every night. You, 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 you got a vibrator in the road, mm-hmm. so you're not really on the path. Because you're still indulging in you're that You're still appetite. indulging in that lower chakra, that lower vibrational shit. Mm-hmm. You're not high vibration, right? Mm-hmm. So you have to become, you have to leave that lower vibration alone, which is nothing wrong with lower vibrations when it's time to do that. And if y'all vibrating the same vibration, right? Like a man that has to have sex with a woman and not give her an STD or anything, but he can cause her to have a, 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 a urinary tract infection from energy, an energy transfer. Or she, he bring a lot of energy to her, it's bad, and she will get a, a BV, she get yeast, all that stuff, because y'all womb hold energy. Like your womb can pull all the energy in this room. So when you have a cycle every month, it's releasing all that, it's a release. That's what that is. So a lot of women, they womb never get to release that energy. So they irate, they irate. They do crazy shit. They do because their womb is full, and it's not being with. It's not having that release of energy. So you have to release that energy, and you have to put in the good energy into the womb. Same with the meal. The good energy, um, and, and like you still can like come or whatever, but not out. It's caused. Um, it basically goes up to your brain, and that energy is used. To like manifest and do other things, mm-hmm. sexual energy. I sex. think so too. Yeah, that's what it's for. When you have a blank sex, it's not good. Like you got to have sex for a purpose, purposeful. Like, okay, what are we doing this for? What is this for? What do we want out of this? Okay, do we want this? We want that? We want to go get this business? Do we want to? Do we want to bring a life into the world? Y'all both intentions got to be set on the same thing. It'll be different. It, be, it won't just be empty sex. It'll be intentional. And you will be. Because that energy flows through it. And then that energy flows through it. Both y'all flow through energy through each other. So it'll be tantric, like tantric sex. Mm-hmm. It won't be gutter sex, if I call it. <laughs> it won't be that. It won't be you just, just doing something. You know what you're doing. 
So yeah, sex is sacred. People, there's a lot of people who like in, in, in certain religions, certain places of the earth, but people here, they do certain rituals before sex. They pray before sex. They do certain things before you go into that sacred act. It's not just you just doing it just willy-nilly with everybody. That's a sacred act because you're bringing, that act is to bring life into the world, a spirit, a new spirit into the world. So that's a sacred act you doing, right? So you can't go into that any kind of way. You can't go into that act drunk. You can't go into that act with spirits on you. Like liquor, it's, they call it spirits. You got a certain spirit on you. You don't know what you got on you, and now you're having sex in a sacred. So you, you're doing it. You're doing something sacred, but you're doing it not righteous. And so, that's in ways like soul ties and how. Yeah, now you got a soul tie to something that's not righteous. And you don't know what's wrong with you. And you keep getting these differences. Soul ties from person to person to person to person. Yeah, but every person, person, they have soul ties with your own soul, just like the meat you're eating mm -hmm. and then what you're putting in your body, that's mm -hmm. because your womb and your, um, your side has that energy to mm -hmm. transfer mm -hmm. on both sides. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 sex is sacred. It's not for, oh, let's just do it. You just want to ooh, just let's do it. it. Might you might have something going on with you deeper than what you know. That you're using sex as a. That you're using sex as a as a weapon, using sex as an opportunity to get your mind off your life, which you can use that if, it, if if that's what you want to do. I'm not telling you to be a prude, but I'm telling you know what you're doing when you are having sex, right? Like everything around us is sex driven. You get on Instagram, it's totally sex driven. You go on your popular page, it's damn near totally sexual. Every meme, every this, every that, the music is totally, the sexual energy is too high in my opinion. Way too high. Way too high. So everything is being sexual, but nothing is being driven by the consciousness in your brain. So when you do have this conversation with certain people, they don't know what you're talking about. They think you're crazy. When I talk about single attention, oh, nah. You're you got, you got, you going to get blue balls. You Crazy nonsense. So, this is a conversation that you have to have with your kids too. When you have kids, you gotta. This how you. This is how you talk to them about sex. You don't tell them, oh, what's the birds and the bees and the bees. Oh, no, you tell them, look, this is this is what's going on. Me and your mother, we came down. We set. We, we put our intention to have you, and you came into the world. That's what sex is. It's sacred, and that's what it's for. It's not for playing around. And so you, when you let them know the seriousness of it, it's not taboo for them to want to do it all the time. It's just like now they're going into the intention of they're going into the intention to know like, exactly of knowing why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. So it's just like now you got kids with guns, right? I feel like this is how I feel. This is me personally. If I have a child, so I don't have kids yet. Um, if I have a child, like I carry guns. However. You teach your child at a young age, this is not a toy. You don't touch this. You let them know this is what this does. You don't just tell them, oh, guns are bad. Because that's going to make them want to go to them. Goes, yeah. Right? If guns you educate are, them. If you educate them on what this is for, it's just a tool to them at that point. It's like, okay, why did the, why did the child walk past all the stuff in the house that could harm them when they got the gun? When it was knives, it was it was it was all kind of, kind of stuff he could have blew the house up with, but he went and got the gun because you taught him about everything. Don't play with knives; they can cut you. Don't touch the stove; it'll burn you. Don't put your finger in the socket; it'll shock you. So when you're teaching them all these things, that's when you teach them about guns. So they won't have that innate thing to go, "Oh, guns! Oh, not supposed to have this. I want one." Yeah. Like same thing with sex. Oh, sex is not supposed to happen. I want to do it right now. Because they're learning. So you're basically mm -hmm. the first teacher that they meet into the world. You are their teacher. From you, the are, teacher. you are That's, that's what your parent is. Your parent is your life coach. Your grandparent is your life coach. That's why you need healthy food so you can be here for your grandkids. So you can be here for your great grandkids because you are going to live this life. So you got to be their life coach. And you have to pass on that knowledge. You have to pass that knowledge on. But if you ain't here, you still got your ancestors, and you got your ancestors to remember. You can still, you know, um, yep. acknowledge your ancestors, yep. that there's their spirit around it's still. But this is what this is for to keep you around so you can talk to your great grandson, mm -hmm. your grandson, your son, and coach them, 
through what they're going through. That's what your parents are for, their coach. That's your coach. You don't need a life coach. Because my grandparents are alive mm -hmm. on my mom's side, both of them. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there's certain traditional things that I'm learning from them mm -hmm. that you're like, okay, they have this entire life experience that you don't have. Mm -hmm. And then they're teaching you from what they've known. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of have to adapt to what you're learning. That's but right. there's that, like, it doesn't matter how old you get. Some things are just, some things don't change. There's nothing mm -hmm. new under the sun. So it doesn't matter if you're 80 years old or 20. Or they're 20. still going to be those. Insane. So when you, this age we are, this is when you got to learn mm -hmm. and not be sedentary in just knowing the basics. So when you get old, you have something to pass. A lot of them just got nothing to pass but ignorance. Mm -hmm. Cause they didn't learn nothing. They didn't learn nothing. They didn't learn this. They, this right here, what, I'm, what we're learning right now, this is elementary. So what we're gonna know when we reach those, you know, those ages. This is elementary. So we're gonna teach them that what this at, when they pre-K, they're gonna be making their own stuff when they three. They're gonna be able to read when they're three. In different languages, because that's gonna be elementary school stuff. But we, well, we learned it now, so that's when you gotta learn all the stuff so you can pass it down, so you don't make the next generation keep going over, starting over, 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 over. And it's like, okay, when are we gonna get, get over here? We just keep starting over and over because a lot well, of that's nothing that's being passed. Down. Nothing being passed, but debt and fucking ignorance. So generational wealth, from what I'm like hearing from you, it's not just monetary. No. Generational wealth is just not passing down a life support plan or life insurance mm -hmm. or property. Mm -hmm. But the biggest wealth you could have really is knowledge because with that knowledge, you're more equipped to, you can always get that money. You can always get the physical things. Obviously, having it passed down to you gives you a better opportunity. Mm -hmm. But when you have that life knowledge, those skills, that wisdom needed mm -hmm. to move on in life, mm -hmm. you move differently because now compare someone who has the wisdom, but someone, compare someone who has the wisdom to someone who doesn't have the wisdom, but they're like billionaires or millionaires. Mm -hmm. Your lifestyle and what you accept and what you perceive to be important is different. Mm -hmm. It's way different. You can have all the money in the world and be totally sick, which most people are. Mm -hmm. Got all the money, billionaires, trillionaires, so fat they can barely walk. Mm -hmm. But how, how can you do all these high level things but can't do the basic? Because you're not wealthy. You're just wealthy when they say you are. You're not really wealthy. You can't even heal yourself. You're wealthy on paper, but not. You're not wealthy. Experience. You're not wealthy by experience. You're not wealthy by your 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 being. Look how you treat your temple. But you treat everything else like it's so big. Mm -hmm. You so out here in the ethers, but you not right here. You way out there, but you never been way in here. Mm -hmm. You gotta be way in here, not way out there. Mm -hmm. So they be way out there, but never way in here. So yeah, that's your wealth. Health, wealth, knowledge itself, that's wealth, that's health. That's that's money. That's money. Yeah. Cause there's people that got all the money in the world, but they don't know these simple sciences. They're looking for a heart right now. They need a heart transplant. They need a kidney transplant. They need this, they need that. And they could just reverse everything by eating this and going and chilling out, getting on social media, go to an island, because they got the money to do it and heal yourself. You're not going to do that. They're going to go get cut on and risk dying on the table. No, nah, that's this is real wealth. This is real wealth. Speaking of energy, mm -hmm. we're electricity, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Explain that to us. Explain what how we are electrical. How we are electrical. Like, you want you want these plates? You want some? Yeah, let me get them. Uh, I'm gonna fast So, okay. We're electrical like this. Your heart beats off mm -hmm. electricity. When your heart stops, what does it do? You still get your breathing. With what? Um, That's electrical. The EKG. It's electrical. Mm -hmm. So that starts the electricity back in your body, jump start, like a car. Mm -hmm. 
When the battery's dead, what do they do? A jump start. That's what they're doing. So your entire body is full of electricity, right? But when you keep putting stuff in your body that's not electrical, your electrical charge goes down. Mm -hmm. When electrical charge goes down too far, you, you pass out. Mm -hmm. Like you short circuit. Mm -hmm. Like that's what you're doing, you short circuit and you blank out, mm -hmm. or you die. Mm -hmm. Or you be in like a vegetative state. And the electricity works like this. Electricity try, is always trying to get to the ground. Ground, I want to go to the ground. Electricity works to go to the ground. So we wear shoes all the time. It's got rubber soles. Mm -hmm. So our feet are never on the ground. So you see a lot of people in a uh, foreign country with no shoes on. Oh, they poor. They, just, they know what they're doing because they ground it out all day. So they calm. The electricity is making it to the ground. So they ground it out. When you're in trouble, when you're young, your parents say, you're grounded. You're in chaos. So they, they don't know what they're saying, but they're saying, look, you out of control. You need to go ground out to the earth. Mm -hmm. So go to your room. They need to, they need to send you outside mm -hmm. and make you take your shoes off and, and put your feet on the earth. Mm -hmm. That's what they need to do because you out of control. Your electricity is out of control mm -hmm. in your body. It's not making it to the ground. Mm -hmm. So all this right here, what does it grow from the ground? Electric. So you have to eat electrical food. Alkaline means what? Electric. When you get a new battery, it says alkaline. When it gets old, it's acidic. You got a car battery, you got acid corrosion, it's the battery is literally dying, it's sick. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's how the electricity works in your body. Everything in your body is electrical. Mm -hmm. You touch something and it's shot, you pow. You electrical. Wait, so the last like week and a half, right? Mm -hmm. Been juicing been like walking outside or like, you know, just like doing all of that. Mm -hmm. And naturally, like I'm someone who's into things like that, but this week I've really been like honing in. Mm -hmm. And I realized whenever I touch people, I shock. You shock them. But why though? Because your electricity is high. Is that a good thing? Yes. So I'm not like, I'm not electrical like chaos. I'm electrical. You electrical, you high energy, you high level electricity. Got a lot of electricity in your body. Because I'm like, why is it everything I've been everything touching? Everything you're touching shocking. is shocking, yeah. Because mm -hmm. yeah, you're electrical. When you're low, when your electricity low, you don't shock nothing. Everything is low. Everything mm -hmm. is dead and bland. Mm -hmm. You won't shock nobody. So, yeah, that's why. Because electricity is high. You can literally take some of these fruits and plug them up, and it'll give the light bulb some light. It'll, it'll start glimmering a little bit. It's that much electricity in the fruit. For real, like a light bulb, you can take a, light, a small light bulb mm -hmm. and, and, and it'll light up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I've seen that, like people do experiments, they plug it. You can, you can turn the lights off of your room and rub your body and you'll see blue electricity mm -hmm. on your body. You that electrical. You'll see it because you have on the fruit. Mm -hmm. You'll see electricity on your body, you'll see it. Um, so yeah, we are completely electrical. That's what that's really what's going on. We're being this we're basically what a, a doctor's supposed to be is an, he's an electrician. Mm -hmm. And he needs to see where you short circuiting that. Mm -hmm. But if he can't see where you short circuiting that, then he can't fix your electrical problem. Mm -hmm. It's most of this all of this stuff we got to, is an electrical problem. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. It's an electrical problem. Your electricity is short circuiting somewhere, or it's not flowing like it should somewhere. It's not flowing somewhere. Yeah, that's all. Your nerves is electricity, so what's when your hair stand up? It's electricity. Your whole nervous system is electricity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's 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 what that's from. Okay. Yeah. Are we using anything else? Uh, we can do some oranges. Yeah, do some oranges. We can do some oranges. Valencia oranges. This is real Valencia orange. It says it there. No, this is not this is, this is where my homegrown organic harvest is. But it says organic, so whatever. So the oranges work like this. You know, vitamin C of course. Mm -hmm. But according to Queen of Food. You gotta read her book, Sacred Woman. Sacred, Sacred Woman. Woman. Sacred Woman by 
Queen of Four. Queen of Who? Queen of Four. Queen of Four. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she talks about the citrus fruit for the women mm -hmm. and healing thyself. Mm -hmm. That's what this book The citrus is really good for women. A lot of older women love citrus. They love it. They're crazy. High in fiber, nutritional fiber. So we're going to use this. Basically, this right here is like this is your digestive system. Mm -hmm. Mouth, esophagus, intestines breaks all that stuff down and come out of the urine mm -hmm. or waste. Oh, yes. So this is based off your digestive system. That's what this machine is based off of. But that's what the juice is. Your digestive system is a juice. The grapes were so good. I'm definitely doing the grapes. And then you could add. Don't worry. <laughs> While you're doing that, I'm going to feast on pomegranates. That's actually too Like the white part too? Not the white part, just, just, the, the, just the seeds. It's really good for inflammation and for women. Pomegranate you know what I have here? With your I have pomegranate juice. The juice. The I'm juice isn't the, the best. Yeah. Your flow, 
that that be dependent on how much blood you be taking in. So mm. maybe TMI, but I used to have the worst, the worst flow, like the worst, mm -hmm. the most extreme of the spectrum, like the vomiting, the nausea, the cramps, like you're in bed for like three days, yes. all of that. So the beginning of last year, I completely changed my diet mm -hmm. and I started eating more Mediterranean, cutting out a lot of red meat. Mm -hmm. I ate chicken maybe once or twice a week, mostly fish but mainly vegetables. Mm -hmm. I promise you, like I remember getting my cycle, I didn't feel a thing. It just came and went. It's gonna be a few drops. And I was like, and even now, like it's shorter, I still have like It should be like two days, days, two days. And the most with all that five, six, seven days a week. No. Still six, but not as painful. You hemorrhage me. And a lot, a lot lighter. Still six, a lot lighter though. Mm -hmm. And then not as painful. But before I promise you, it was, I would literally, like I would bile up. Sorry, so much mm -hmm. TMI. No, this needs to be serious. I would bile up literally everything that I would eat two, three days. So I wouldn't eat two to three days prior. Mm -hmm. And I was so stubborn about taking ibuprofen because I'm like, I need to find a natural way to make this better and I would not nothing was working and I was like let me just change my diet two months the first month came didn't feel anything the second month came didn't feel anything the third month I was like wait a minute and then I started making this juice I put like pineapple bark I did pomegranates I did oranges um beets are really good for you especially for women for your flow I did beets Put all of it in a pot. I also added some citrus, added some raspberries, blueberries, just a bunch of like berries and like all of those things. I'll have a video somewhere up here. And just to drink that for a week before, uh -huh. I mean, worked miracles. Because I researched what were the properties in ibuprofen. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's all you gotta do. What are the properties in this, and then what fruits and vegetables have these properties? Because it all comes from a natural source, mm -hmm. and then they use that natural source, and then they combine they, it with different things, and then and they John Rockefeller is doing, you know? Yeah, they take the natural and they take it, and make it unnatural. And you just gotta find the natural, what it is, the natural, what it is, to reverse whatever disease. Going going on. <laughs> this is how I've been fasting all day. Mm -hmm. This is how you break your fast with fruit. This is breakfast. This is breakfast. Mm -hmm. I'm breaking the fast. You break the fast between, I would love the first time I drink. You break your fast with coconut. With coconut. Mm -hmm. That's what you break your fast with. Something neutral. With melon or coconut. No. You better be ready for that. Are you drinking this in the morning before you work out? Or before any workout? If you work out in the morning or at night, your energy levels are Real high. crazy. Real high. Woke up this morning at like 6. I was like, I don't want to get out of bed. But I was like, I know I have some <laughs> coconut juice in the fridge. Just took like one whole cup. Was in the gym for two hours. You can't stop. You won't stop. You won't stop working out. You won't stop. What made you decide to do this? I know when it comes to business, there's so many different business opportunities, different things you could get involved in. Why did you choose Midnight Vegan? What about this were you so passionate about that you felt like this is what I'm going to do? Um, it's a couple of different reasons. Um, for one, um, I had a lot of people in my family die from disease. Mm -hmm. My father being the first one mm -hmm. when I was what, 16. So he was trying to switch it up right before he passed, but it was kind of, it wasn't too late. He just wasn't doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. He was just doing the generic stuff that people tell you, oh, eat broccoli, eat this and that. If he would have been juicing, this, his pride. He probably still be. So there's been a lot of people in my family that have people that I just know who has passed or is sick currently. And they have no idea about 
the effects of fruit, the effects of herbs. So I'm trying to be an example to them. Because they'll hear you all day, but if you're not living, you're not going to pay them too much attention. Mm -hmm. So you can tell them all day, but I live it. I live it every day. And, uh, that's why I want to do it. That's one of the reasons. Another reason is I went to a so-called juice bar and I asked for watermelon juice and he gave me a watermelon slushie. An un un unseated watermelon slushie. Then he put some sweetener in there and said it was watermelon juice. Mm. You remember Fat? He gonna see this. I'm my cousin. <laughs> I'm my cousin Fat. Uh, What's up, Fat? What up? One way fly. <laughs> uh, I told him, we left out the mall. Mm -hmm. I said, man, I'm going to start my own uh, juice thing. Because I was already juicing. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm, I'm going to start my own juice thing. And uh, I just popped it up. I ain't waste no time. I ain't waiting on nobody to be like, I didn't ask nobody, you think I should just? I ain't asking nobody for nothing. But I had already been wanting to do it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to start a smoothie company. That's what it was. That's what I told you about. Like two years ago? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was but, like, Midnight Vegan. I was like, okay. Yeah. No, I was trying to Midnight Smoothie. Midnight Smoothie, yeah. Shout out to Shout out to Fatty, man. He was like, bro. We were riding. We were going somewhere. We was, we, we, we was out. And uh, I was like, I'm going to call it Midnight Smoothie. He was like, nah, because we need to call it Midnight Vegan. Thought about it. Thought about it. So by the time we got where we was going, I was like, yeah, that's what I'm gonna call it. So, uh, that's how it started. It started off, it really started off somebody giving me a product that I didn't like, and I said, they giving this to the community, black people, and we don't even know what we're taking. So the black people over there thinking they're drinking something good, it ain't no different than what they're drinking from there together. That's, that's how I said. Mm -hmm. Everybody being sick. Mm -hmm. And I said, I ain't, I ain't, I'm not going out like that. Mm -hmm. How many people you gonna watch that mm -hmm. before you make a change? Mm -hmm. But some people just give up, basically. They're like, well, I'm gonna die from something. I might as well die from the food I'm eating. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna get shot, so I'll just die. I'll just I just die from food. I, you, you, they just give up. They just give up. They just be like, you know what? I'm gonna die anyway. Might as well die. I'm gonna die anyway. Mm -hmm. So they, they give up. They be done gave up years before they die. Mm -hmm. They give up. So it be real disheartening because you got a lot of family that is like that. Like, mm -hmm. They they see what you're doing, but it really is fit in the face. It's like you got this going on. You got that going on. You taking this medicine. This wrong with you, you ain't healing from me, and you got the answer, but they like, I ain't really hearing you. They go listen to their doctor in that white coat because that doctor in that white, that doctor in that white coat is sanctioned by the, the authorities, right? So the white coat, I ain't gonna be some big discussion about against doctors. To be a doctor, I feel like you should be able to heal, mm -hmm. not treat and diagnose. Treatment, diagnosing, that's... Short term. Yeah. I think you should use the doctors for like, if you got a broken bone, you need to set the bone, you need stitches, you need a gunshot wound, he fixed, mm -hmm. that type of stuff. Yeah, but healing, they're practicing medicine. They're practicing. Practical. I don't know what they're doing. It's practical. Let's try this. Let's try that. Let's hmm. Radiology, uh, 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 chemo. Let's cook your blood and put it back in you. Pull it back out. Put it back in you. You practice. You're not healing nothing. You took somebody's kidney. Kidney, kidneys. I know somebody now. They don't have no kidneys, and they waited on a kidney. Two kidneys. That's bizarre. That hurt my feelings. I know this person from since I was a child. Mm -hmm. I mean, I told them what to do a while back when they did still have their kidney, but it fell on deaf ears. So now they don't have kidneys and they're waiting on 
two kidneys when they could have flushed their kidneys with them grapes. But hey, people, you, you learn when you learn. You get it when you get it. You get it. Every blade of grass don't grow at the same rate. So you might get it today. I might get it tomorrow. But I don't want you to get it when it's too late. So I don't watch too many people wait till it's too late to try to get it. So. That's why I started the business. That's why. Mm -hmm. Well, is there anything else you want to tell the community and people watching before we wrap up our video? Um. Wait, follow him at Midnight Vegan ATL on Instagram. TikTok, do you have TikTok? Mm hmm. Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, and Sasol, all the same handle. Uh, Midnight Vegan ATL. So I'll tag it somewhere up here. Tag it, follow me, pay attention. I try to teach on there. I try to put what I can put on there for you. Um, you can buy the juice, my link. It should be in my bio. You can go to my website and buy all the juices. Uh, anything can you ship? I can ship. Okay. It gets expensive. I'm gonna tell y'all that now. Shipping juice is not cheap, but yeah, I can ship it. Yeah. Around the Atlanta area, yeah, when you start going out west, it, it's expensive. What makes it expensive? Whatever reason you send it out west, it's just the carrier is just expensive. Mm -hmm. Take care of taking it out of it. So, I don't know why, but it is expensive. And then the juice is heavy. Mm -hmm. It's heavy, so like a half a gallon is four pounds. You know? And then you gotta keep cold and all that. But yeah, I can ship for sure. If you ain't got this in your town, yes, I can ship this too. For yeah. sure. For sure. If you wanna get a ship too, you can make it yourself. Huh? Or they can oh yeah, you can make it yourself. Yeah. But what if you live you, in the Atlanta area? If you live in the Atlanta area, I got you. Because I'm gonna tell you what to do. And I got, a, I got, a, I'm coming out with a, with a, with a, uh, like a, like a planner, not a planner, but a, um, I got to tell you what to juice and what not to juice and what to juice with what, to juice what. So if you want to get in shape, you want to, I got you. And I train you too. So if you need a trainer, I'm, this is a part of the program of the trainer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you available for consultation? Yes. You see that? One man, so many talents. He also cuts hair. And a barber too. So. That's a part of the ministry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much for thank just for being here and like gracing us with your wisdom and your knowledge and being the first episode. First episode. This was, I actually, we had this idea. I reached out to you last year. Last year. Last year. We met 2022. I reached out to him last year. Beginning of the year, I was like, hey, I want to do this like series. And I wanted you to be like the first person just because I knew how passionate he was about what he was trying to turn it out to the community. So I'm glad that a full year later we're here and I hope you guys got a lot of amazing information that you could use to share with yourselves, your family, your friends, and just thank you guys for watching. Be sure to follow Kyle at Midnight Vegan ATL. I'll link all of his information across all platforms he's available for consultation also look out for when he drops out that guide for what you should be juicing or not juicing or just like dm him and have a chat with him and just to learn more anything you want to add before we close out health is well health well knowledge is still uh, this is your medicine remember that this is not just something you do casually as a diet, as a short diet. Term. this is your medicine. Heal thyself with the medicine that's been put here. Mm -hmm. Remember that this is your medicine. This is medicine. Remember that. Come on, people, remember that. Okay. Well, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys on the next episode. Peace.